everyone is okay. I was expecting maybe more people here. Maybe people are still having their coffee. Uh, so I'm here to talk about my library, PyFetty. And basically, this is a domain decomposition solver. Uh, does anyone here have, or does, does anybody here know about domain decomposition methods? Oh, nice, at least one. Uh, and then, uh, okay, I'm going to talk about the, the method itself. Uh, Fetchy, it comes from finite element tiering and interconnecting. So basically, we are using the finite element technology, but we are splitting our uh, problem in multiple pieces, and then we, we try to connect these pieces together again. So this is the, the agenda. So I'm going to talk about my research project and what is specific domain decomposition method, how to use the library, scalability tests, because these methods are, are very special because we can achieve very good numerical scalability, not only for non, uh, for shared memory, but for non-shared memory uh, architecture. So why I started this project? Because I'm part of the expertise project, and the goal of this project is to simulate turbine. And turbine, they are made of many components, and sometimes the mesh uh, is very big, and this mesh cannot fit in one single machine. Uh, and then we need to split the mesh into different components and try to solve this problem, uh, which is very big. But also we need to, to be efficient and to, to, to scale the algorithm. So it means if we use more resources, uh, we would like to, to reduce the time of simulation. Okay. Uh, in order to do that, we, we are working in different libraries. So PyFetch is basically the dual domain composition solver. Also, we have a framework named AMFE, which is a finite element framework uh, written in Python. Uh, and also, we are trying to solve the nonlinear vibration problem. And in order to do that, we, we need continuation library. We couldn't find any continuation library in Python. Uh, of course, there is some libraries like Tritinos, written in C, C uh, which is a good library. But sometimes we had some problems in our, in, uh, for coupling these libraries with Python. So that's why we, uh, we decided to, to create our, our own library. So how we, we apply these dual domain decomposition methods? Uh, as I told you, uh, this is coming from the finite element technology. So we start from the mechanical equilibrium. So we have our component, we have a partial differential equation, and then we apply the finite element method, and we get a linear system of equations. Okay, very simple. So this is simple linear algebra, and now we need to solve a linear system. So this is simple, right? Uh, but of course, if we have one million degrees of freedom, or 55 million or 1 billion, then this can be a, a big problem to solve. But we can talk about two, oh, sorry, we can talk about two different families. One is the direct methods. Maybe you you know these methods: Cholesky and U decomposition, QR factorization. They are really good. Uh, they have some pros. Basically, they are very robust and they they are very precise. But on the other hand, uh, they are very slow and hard to parallelize. Also, we have the family of the iterative methods. Uh, usually, they are part of the, the Krylov methods, like CG, GMRS, MinRES. And usually, they are fast and easy to parallelize, because basically, we're just doing matrix multiplication. Uh, but they, they need very good preconditioners in order to, to reduce the number of iterations. Uh, sometimes they're not very robust, and also uh, the, the accuracy, the precision depends on the tolerance we set in the algorithm. And sometimes we, we try to combine these methods. So, for instance, maybe you have heard about the incomplete Cholesky method together with uh, CG, conjugate gradient. And basically, we try to use the Cholesky or the incomplete Cholesky in order to speed up the, the direct method and not pivoting every element in the matrix. Uh, and then we do the incomplete Cholesky as the preconditioner for the CG method. 
So combine these methods sometimes is, is a good idea instead of using them isolated. Okay, and what's the idea of the domain composition methods? Is basically try again to use these ideas together. Uh, but in order to do that, we basically divide our domain in subdomains. So this is domain decomposition. So we are dividing our big domain in multiple domains. And then our big system now is very simple like this. So basically the, we are decoupling the systems uh, and then we can solve them this linear system separately. So in different uh, CPUs or even different nodes in our HPC system. However, this is not purely true because we need an extra condition because when we decompose our system, the interface between this domain must be equal and then we need this extra condition here, which is the gap condition. So the, this matrix, the, this B matrix is selecting the degrees of freedom in one domain, in the I domain, uh, this other B matrix is getting the, the interface in the J domain and basically we need to select the interface in this domain, the other domain and when we sum up these two uh, values, these two vectors, uh, we, we get zero or we should get zero. So this is the interface gap. If it's not zero, at least we should minimize the interface gap. Okay, so how can we change the behavior of the gap basically into introducing Lagrange multipliers. So basically we introduce some forces at the interface in order to reduce the gap. So this is uh, written here by the Boolean matrix at the interface. Basically we are applying forces at the interface with these uh, Lagrange multipliers. Okay. Uh, and because we have some domains that are floating domains, it means we have a singular system here. The general solution of the, the system involves the no space of the system operator, our stiffness matrix. And then the forces we are applying at the interface must be orthogonal to the no space. So this is also an extra condition to fulfill. Uh, and then the general solution, solution involves oh, the the kernel or the no space of our stiffness matrix uh, times this factor, which is the factor how much we should move these domains in order to have a zero gap. Okay? And then we do the condensation technique. That's why we call dual condensation or dual domain decomposition method because we condense this system here. So we remove the displacement that appears here in this equation and we get a system like this, where you have this F operator, uh, which is a linear operator, uh, that basically is acting the forces at the interface. So this is a condensation technique where we remove the interiors, the degrees of freedom, and now we have a, a small system only with lambdas as unknowns at the interface. The forces, not displacements anymore. And then we can solve this system using uh, CG method. Okay, so good. So the combination of the direct and iterative method is written here because these we solve with a CG method. But here we have the pseudo inverse. Basically, is the solution of the linear system that I've shown you. And this pseudo inverse, basically, we use a Scholastic uh, factorization or LU factorization depending on uh, our system. If our system is symmetric, we can use Cholesky. If it's not symmetric, we can use uh, SuperLU. So this, uh, this so pseudo inverse, we can use the side by uh, factorization techniques. Okay, the solver is written like this. Basically, we have the fatty solver, uh, and then connect to the fatty solver, we have the manager, and the manager basically orchestrate, orchestrate the pieces uh, that are here, the local problem itself, the coarse problem, which is basically the, the or original problem, without considering the flexibility, only rigid movements, as every domain is a rigid block. So we, we solve also this problem, and this is speeding up our convergence as much weight. In much weight you have multiple uh, meshes, and here you have this coarse mesh. 
we have the solution object at the, the end of the, the, the solution procedure we need to access the displacement, the forces at the interface and the correction of the rigid bodies and also we have the solver module uh, where we can choose our iterative solver, uh, namely CG method, GMRES, MinRES and so on. So for, for up to now we have the serial and power version because basically the manager we just have a different implementation for, for the manager if we want to implement a serial version or a power version so these blocks here they, they are equal and we just need to replace the manager in order to orchestrate these pieces in a different fashion. Uh, for the dialect method or the sub-inverse we have SVD which is uh, very costly but very stable. We have Cholesky and SuperLU basically are the SciPy standard uh, factorization methods. Also we have a generic interface for the iterative solver and for now we have the CG method or specifically the PCG method, projected conjugate gradient, the projected mean res and the projected GM res. We have power preconditioners, LAMP, SuperLAMP and Dirichlet and we support both, both platforms. Windows and Linux. Uh, and also, uh, we have these built in scalability tests. So, because it's this kind of solver is natively parallel, we always want to, to test our scalability. So, if you have a HPC system, you can uh, clone the library and do some scalability tests in your HPC system. So, how to use very simple? So, of course, this is example is very simple, but if we have two domains, we just need to build our system matrix, in this case the structural problem, so stiffness matrix, the matrix that selects the, the degrees of freedom on the interface and the boundary condition, normal boundary condition in our body. Uh, so for every body, every domain, we have to construct these matrices. And then we pass this matrix to a dictionary. So this is the way we pass information to our solver. We construct a dictionary where uh, is a key value pair, where the index is the number of the domain, and the value is the stiffness matrix associated with it, or the Boolean matrix, or the, uh, the boundary condition. We pass it to this information to the solver as a dictionary. Uh, we call the, the solve method, and then we have a solution object that contains the, the displacement, the forces at the interface and the rigid body corrections. So if the algorithm, if we call the parallel version, basically we have a single Python running and then what we do is basically uh, the, the solver manager is creating these local problems and serializing our storage system. So basically we have two domains and then we have two files for our domains and then we also create these shell scripts that basically calls MPI. So MPI, and then the MPI will uh, call or essentially two Pythons in this case. Every Python is associated with a rank, and every rank is associated with a local problem. So every local problem that we have is basically a, a rank in the MPI. And then, of course, the solver will synchronize and do the CG method uh, in the domains. Uh, until convergency, then we serialize the result in the solution object and then we bring it back to the, the, the Python. Uh, so this is the problem version. And of course if you have uh, multiple machines or if your mesh is so big that it cannot fit in the web memory, what you can do is separately uh, construct the, the local problems in different machines, for instance, save it and then you can just uh, call the, the MPI solver like this. So even though every, uh, the, the pre-processing is not here explicitly, but uh, we can do this, uh, this pre-processing separately because the solver works like that. Okay. So scalability tests. Uh, as I told you, we have built-in scalability tests where we can select the number of domains in, in the x-direction, y-direction. We can define the, the size of the domains. And then here are some results. So varying from one MPI uh, for sorry for four MPI processes to 100 MPI processes, 
and of course the time is reducing. So when we use 100 processes for 5 million doses, uh, more or less, we can solve the problem in five in one minute. But if we look, the scalability test is not so good, especially when we look four and sixteen, because we are multiplying the resources by four and we are reducing the time by by a factor of two. This happens because here we, we, are, we are using a single node in our HPC system, where it is here we are using two uh, nodes. It means we need some network communication in order to transfer information from one domain to the other, and that's why here we have a gap. But if we look 16 to 36, so basically we're doubling, we have twice the resource here, and then we have a factor of uh, a half in the time. So basically we're multiplying our resources by two, and we are still uh, reducing our time by a factor of two. But of course, if we progress and use more uh, CPUs, more processes, uh, we, we get a plateau, we cannot scale anymore. And here, a bigger problem where we have 55 million doses. Uh, we, we see a good scalability. In this case, we are using multiple nodes in our HPC system. So if we use 48 to 432, we are multiplying our resources by 10 and the, the, the time is uh, divided by 10, so very good. But of course, when we start increasing and then when we use, what, 1,200 uh, MPI processes, we cannot scale anymore and the time is like increasing because the global communication here, uh, you can see these uh, pizza graphs, uh, you can see the, 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 the red one is the matrix multiplication and the other calls are global communication, the, the global uh, Communication is so important that we cannot scale anymore. Uh, so for in the future work, I would like to improve the, the projection and the scala product because these are the global operation and this is taking uh, a long time, especially with a lot of uh, more than a, a thousand CPU, CPUs or MPI processes. We would like to implement 3D scalability tests, also implement new mo module for preconditioner. I'm working the eigen solver now. I have a prototype for the eigen solver, fetching for Helmholtz equations, where we have complex systems uh, and we cannot use CG. We need GMRS to solve these methods. And also, we have a framework that allows us to implement different fetching methods, like fetching DP, fetching new, and simultaneous fetching. So, thank you for your attention. And